All right, guys. All right, guys, what's going on? So here we go. We're going to do a little DIY antler repair and color. Um, we got a broken time. This, this is a sweet deadhead a buddy I know picked up. And uh, it had this broken uh, fourth right here. So we're going to G4. So we're going to fix the G4 and uh, then do a color. But uh, the way I do time repair, I like to use the actual antler. I don't like using the... the the plaster or bondo or or pla any of that stuff, guys. I I like to fix antler with antler. Um, that's just how I am. There's a lot of guys out there that do it different ways. They do a phenomenal job. Um, this is just my way. This is the way I do it. Um, I'm always always watching other guys' YouTube stuff to see how they do it. See if there's anything in there that I can use the way I do it to make it better, easier, or just something I didn't know. But uh, yeah, this is the way I do it, and uh, I've already started with the time. I, you know, I did this. I'm actually doing this in my office right now, just because it's so hot outside. I normally do it in my sh in my op in my garage, but uh, I'm doing it in the office. That way, I can record it and still be in the AC <laughs> for you guys. So uh, yeah, so this is kind of a makeshift setup as far as where we're doing it. So what I did was I already found a time that matched pretty much. The circumference here and the overall length. Now we're going length. We're basing the length off of the other side, just because for the most part this bowl is pretty symmetrical. The only thing on him that's not within, you know, an inch is this G5 on him. This right, this left side's G5 is way longer than that right side. Um, but everything else, all all the other times are about the same. So we decided to to leave this leave this one the exact you know about the same as the other side too so uh, what we've done was we've already went and found it cut it lined it all up now we're going to show you after you guys have done this right here I mean you can see it right there after you guys have already found the time that you're going to use then you can come in and this is where we're going to show you how I do it so here goes alright guys so I paused for a second and collected everything I need to uh, get these two pieces attached here and good and sturdy and, and ready to go for blending and coloring so okay so I've got what I do is I, I use a dowel, a metal dowel. Right here I've got a 16 inch penny nail that I actually I just kind of cut the head off off the end of it and then kind of scratched it up, roughed it up a little bit with some sandpaper. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what I do is you're going to need a drill and a drill bit but I try to go with the drill bit, I can try to go just a little bit bigger than uh, what I'm using, but not not too much. And what I got here is I, I think it's a 1364 size drill bit. And then I've got my Gorilla Glue, uh, electrical tape, and uh, this right now I'm using this Elmer's two-part hardener um, wood repair. But normally I don't use that very often. I, I I prefer JB Weld Wood Repair, and it's a two-part. You actually knead it together. That stuff is awesome. I I thought I had some, and I'm out. But <clears throat> this Elmer stuff for something like this works perfect. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to drill this, and then glue it and attach it. But we're going to show you guys all step by step. So first off. You can't just drill a hole straight and, and call it good, unless you're going to drill your hole big, really, really big, compared to the piece you're working, so you can move it around. But um, you want to try to line it up the way you want it, and that way you know that you're going to be offset a little bit one way or another. Do you know what I mean? Like, because <clears throat> obviously the antler's not perfect. You're going to have to blend it. So. You want to make sure that your lines on one side are where you want them so you can hide the other side is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so... So that's going at an angle, but it's favoring this side of the antler.
Okay, I'm going to pause so I can show you guys. Okay, so there is that hole on this side, on the antler itself. Um, I kind of just followed it at an angle and uh, I followed it at an angle down and then tried to be as close to center as far as the softer stuff in the middle there. And then on this one, I offset this one. See if I can get there. I offset this one on the left, <clears throat> more towards the left, and uh, up a little bit. That way, when they're together, I mean, it's not going to be exact, but that way, when they're together, this side, this side is perfectly lined up. This side has a little bit of an overhang, but it's on the back inside, so it's going to be easier to hide. Whereas to this side is going to be perfect and blend nice. So that is why I drilled them like that. So okay, now now that we I've showed you guys how the holes are set up, we're going to put our our nail in right here. We're going to try to see where it ends up. All right, so we've got to go a little bit deeper, which is good because I'd rather have to go a little bit deeper than uh, be too deep. And we're not even going to drill it though. The nice thing about this stuff is it's soft enough. We can literally push that thing down in there the way we want it. Okay, so we've got it in there. We need to have a little bit of a bend on this, not a lot, but just a little. So I'm just going to put it in there. Now I do it this way, that way I don't wall, wall her out the holes, both holes too much. So. Okay, so we got a little bit of a bend in that right there. I'm going to put that in with that bend going the direction we want it to. Force that down, just like that. It's perfect exactly where we want it. So, we've got it all set up the way we want it. Now we need to make sure when we tape it together until the stuff dries that it, it it stays that way. So, I'll show you what to do with that here in a minute. Okay, now we're going to, uh, we're going to do our Gorilla Glue here. <coughs> Mine's starting to get a little dry dry now. As long as it's still liquid, this stuff still works. Okay, take everything apart. We're going to get the surface wet like we tell you to. Here. push it into that hole Especially on this one, because it is this part. This one is a little bit more dry than than that. This than this piece here. Push that on and then 
there's going to be some excess, that's fine. Now, we're going to take our tape, and because I want this side lined up, like I showed you, I want this side to line up, I just got like a little saw blade here, and uh, I'm just going to use it to uh, make sure this side right here stays flat once, because the tape will move the antler around. Um, any tape will work. Okay, now we got it all taped up, we got it lined up, we know kind of how we, we want it, so we're going to just let it sit and dry. This, guys, let this time, you know, this is, this part's important, let it dry. Like, don't get carried away too soon, because you don't want to, you don't want to make stuff weak inside and everything. Let it do its job and, and, and follow the directions on whatever glue you use, whether it be epoxy or or Gorilla Glue or, or anything, but make sure it's dry or you follow the dry on it. That's probably the you know biggest most important thing that I've learned when gluing these things together. So see you in a couple hours. Alright guys, what's up? So we're back. So we got everything uh, dry and good. It's been a couple days. I uh, I went to start doing the recording to show you guys the coloring and everything and my damn battery was dead so I decided to put on the charger and get started on it anyways that way I can kind of go through it a little bit differently with you guys we're going to do the coloring on the other side so we're still going to show everything over here but uh, this side this had the broken that broken tine right here so I'm going to show you what I did I've already done some coloring I've been working on lighting back up bringing out some definition and some lines and stuff and then uh, blending this tine here too so you go get the camera and I'll show you guys up close Alright, so here we go. You can see where it's a little bit white. That's where I was using a, a file or a rasp to uh, kind of break the edges down the most I could. And then I've added my two part, that, that stuff I showed you guys right there. I've added that, mixed that, and I've put it. You guys look, I can, if you can, you can tell I, I just put a little bit on. I don't get crazy with it. I make it, you know, from clear down here to clear up there, all thick. I just do it lightly right here where my lines get at. That way, when it dries, I don't have to sand so much because the more you sand on this antler, the more it's gonna change everything. So, I've got, I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. I don't know if you can see that very well, but this antler is actually pretty dry. I mean, it's gray. It's it's actually got that gray tint to it. So it absorbs like a sponge when you put anything on it. And it usually doesn't do it the way you want it to. And you know, this is all raw right here. I haven't I haven't started trying to lighten this up yet. But up here is where I'm at and where I've been working. You can see come out pretty nice. When they're this dry and this old, unfortunately you do have to go a little bit darker. Normally I try to go a little a little light with a little bit more, you know, different color in something like this. But when it's dry like this, the light color just doesn't do what you want it to do. It absorbs in and it gets even lighter. It's it's really hard to uh, get it to apply the way you want. At least with leaving the antler original to where it shows the lines and, and everything that you want. You don't want to, you know, hide that stuff. So, stay tuned, we're gonna keep at it. All right, we're back, here we go. So, still letting stuff over there dry and do stuff thing with uh, the filler and everything. So, I'm gonna go to this side now. I do got a little bit of work to do on this side. You know, those Already. So now, what I do, I got a cup here, 
And uh, I like to use lacquer thinner, but when you're working on an elk like this, lacquer thinner goes way too fast. It just evaporates. So I use I use paint thinner, which is pretty much like a lacquer thinner, but it lasts, you know, it uh, it lasts a little bit longer. And then I use um, an oil uh, oil base, oil color basically paint. This one, normally when I do it, I'll do a red, not a red red, but like a, a burgundy or a, a raw cn, or sienna. I use this one a lot too for that lighter look. But on the elk, a lot of the times, I, on the first look, layer, I'll use the raw cn. But on, on, for the most part, I like a lot of burnt umber for the elk. Just because it's got that, it's just got that right look, in my opinion. Now the way I do this, is not necessarily the way, the right way, or the only way. This is just another way that I've found. Other people before me have done it. I'm not invent reinventing the wheel here or anything, but what I do here is I've got, like I said, I've got, I got uh, this little cup here full of my thinner that I can just dip my brush in. And I'll take some of this burnt umber and I'm going to put this stuff on. I'm going to try to put this on pretty thick. I don't want to water or, or cut it down too much to start. Um, just because of how dry it is. I want the I want a good solid color to go to, to absorb in, not, not a thin cut down watery basically color in there. Basically, I'll, I'll come get the camera too and show you what it's going to look like to start. thick down here on the base obviously. The base is always pretty thick. Okay, so Okay, so see what we got here? Put it on really thick. That's where you know I'm starting to lighten out, but put it on. Okay, so I went and put it on thick. As you can see. Now. All right, now we've got. We've got it on thick, so what we're going to do is I filled my cup back up here with thinner and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to soak it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to soak this thing and I'm just going to start rubbing it all over it. Especially on spots where it looks like it might be thicker than others because you'll get that a little bit too. So what you're doing here is, is you're you're thinning it out, but you're also blending it and running it down the antler into spots where it might not be quite as thick, from spots that are thicker, lightening it up a lot too, doing this. Take my rag and I'll put some on this. Okay, so I got my rag, I got it pretty saturated with the thinner. And now I'm just going to rub.
God, do it. Keep rubbing. You start seeing, start seeing it thin out, lighten up. Okay. 